this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Thinking Skills Assessment. Hi, I'm Naman. I study philosophy, politics and economics at Merton College, Oxford. I remember two years ago when I was applying for the TSA and finding the process so stressful and there were so many things that I learned along the way that I wish somebody had told me. So that's why I'm making this video. This is what I scored in section one of my TSA. Don't worry if that means absolutely nothing to you. I'm gonna tell you everything in this video. The format, how the scoring works, what score you should be aiming for, and how to get that score. Firstly, the format. The thinking skills assessment is split up into two sections. Section one is 50 multiple choice questions, half on problem solving and the other half on critical thinking. And you have 90 minutes to do it. The second section is a 30 minute essay and you'll have four essay titles to choose from. Now, not everybody actually has to do section two. If you're doing these subjects, you only have to do section one. But if you're doing these subjects, Unfortunately, you have to do both section one and section two. What score should you be aiming for? Well, the scoring is pretty simple. For section one, every question has an equal worth. And so by the end of the paper, you'll have a total out of 25 for critical thinking, out of 25 for problem solving, and out of 50 overall. Those three totals are then converted into scores, which take into account the difficulty of the paper and how other people did that year. For section two, the scoring is a little bit different and there's not really much information available out there on that. So don't worry about it. Just write the best essay you possibly can. But for section one, the TSA company tells us that the average applicant is scoring in the 60s, that a comparatively high score would be in the 70s and that an exceptional candidate will score above 80. If you do a little bit more digging in the statistics though, you can find that there is actually a little bit of difference in the score you should be aiming for depending on the subjects. So if you're applying for experimental psychology or PPL, you should be aiming for around 71 or 72. But if you're applying for economics and management or PPE, then I would aim a little bit higher at 74 or 75. Okay, so you know what the goal is. How are you going to get that goal? Practice, 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 practice. What does that look like? Well, for section one, go through all of the past papers. Then if you can, get a practice question book. Go through all the questions in there. If you want to do even more, look at the BMAT section one because it's very similar to the TSA and it's actually a little bit harder. So I do all of those practice papers available online as well. Don't just practice hard though, practice smart. Always practice under timed conditions, under exam conditions, take it seriously. And after you've done the paper, note down all the questions you got wrong, try them again under timed conditions. I'd also make a list of all the questions that you're finding repeatedly difficult. Really do some intensive practice on those types of questions. For section two, I'd actually advise you practice slightly differently because it's just so time consuming to do full length practices. So what I'd recommend is that you do lots of five minute essay plans. Give yourself five minutes and write the most detailed outline you possibly can. What your argument's going to be, what points you're going to make, how you're going to back them up. Of course, on top of that, you do need to be doing about five or six real essay practices under time conditions, the full 30 minutes. And I really make the most of those. So of course, do them under exam conditions and then afterwards, get somebody to look over them for you. So if you can, ask a teacher to look over them. And if you can't, that's perfectly fine. That's what our uni which mentors are here for. We'd be more than happy to look over your essays, give you some really detailed feedback completely free. Okay, now I'm gonna go into some much more in-depth advice. So if you're feeling confident already, feel free to leave. But this is where it's gonna get really interesting. For section one, let's break it down into critical thinking and problem solving. So with the typical critical thinking question, you're gonna be presented with a big passage of information, a short question, and then a few multiple choice options to choose from. So I'd actually recommend that you go straight to the question and ignore the passage. Figure out what the question's asking you for, what type of question this is, and then use a laser focus to highlight, annotate what's important in the passage. Because there's so much information there that's designed to distract you and confuse you. You wanna be able to go straight past that to get to what's relevant to the question. Okay, let's look at the seven different types of critical thinking question you can have. The first type is identifying the main conclusion. So the conclusion is the statement that the whole passage is supporting, it's giving you reasons to believe. A great way to figure out whether you found the main conclusion or not is to ask yourself, what is this passage trying to say? What is it trying to make me believe? And it's often gonna be a recommendation. So include the word should or must. Second type is drawing a conclusion. And this is exactly the same, except the conclusion is not stated in the passage. Thirdly, you have identifying an assumption. An assumption is going to be something that's required for the conclusion of the passage to be true, but isn't actually stated anywhere in the passage. A great way to test whether you found the assumption or not is to ask yourself, well, if this statement was false, would the conclusion still be true? And if not, that's the assumption. Fourthly, we have assessing the impact of additional evidence. So this is a question like, which of the following would most strengthen the argument? And really important to notice, it says most, so there may be multiple answers that strengthen the argument, but you'll need to find the one that has the biggest impact. Number five, reasoning errors. So this is where you're identifying the flaw in the passage. So the passage is trying to reach a certain conclusion, 
but it doesn't actually have sufficient justification for that conclusion. And that might be for a number of reasons, and you have to identify what that reason is. Number six is my favorite. This is the parallel reasoning questions. So this is where it will ask you which of the following arguments has the most similar structure to the one in the passage. A great way to do this is to kind of simplify the passage into algebra. So if you look at this example, it says, you need to revalidate your passport to go on holiday. You haven't revalidated your passport, therefore you can't go on holiday. Really simple, you need A to do B, you have an A, therefore you can't do B. A passage that has an identical structure would be, breakfast is essential for a healthy lifestyle, you don't eat breakfast, therefore you can't have a healthy lifestyle. Finally, we have the principal questions. So this is asking you which of the following applies the same principle as in the passage. So it's asking you what rule the passage is using to reach its conclusion and which of the following has the same rule. So I'll give you another example. The passage might say, there shouldn't be first class on trains. No one is better than anyone else. So no one deserves better seating. And that's really simple. It's saying a principle something like everybody should be treated equally. And then you just find the option using the most similar principle. Okay, now let's move on to problem solving. So with problem solving, the TSA is gonna ask you to be doing three things. Firstly, extracting information. It's gonna give you so much information in graphs, in tables, in passages that isn't relevant, just designed to waste your time. Now you should be spending a maximum of two minutes on a question. So you need to really get to the heart of the information that's relevant to you really fast. So I'd recommend you look at the question first and you figure out what information you need in order to figure out the answer. And then look for those specific pieces of information from the passage rather than reading the whole thing. The second thing that it's gonna ask you to do is manipulate information, usually with basic calculations. So get really comfortable with your GCSE level maths, simple things like fractions, percentages, ratios. It's really useful as well to have really strong mental maths because you have to do so many calculations so quickly. So I'd recommend learning your times tables up to 18. I actually had an app that I used to do this and I do a little bit of practice every day and I used to compete with a friend and that made it a little bit more fun and easy to learn. The third thing is spatial reasoning. So these are gonna be questions where they've got cubes and nets and look at your objects from different angles. I found these so difficult. And so what I did was really intensive practice on those types of questions. And there's so many free questions about this online because actually lots of jobs use this for their pre-interview assessments. For the cube questions, I'd suggest you draw like a transparent net of the object and then you can imagine it more easily from different angles. And if you bring a rubber in the exam, then you can actually draw on it and play around with it and get to the answer really easily. Okay, now let's do section two. So for section two, they're looking for a balanced, concise and persuasive essay, all in 30 minutes. Let's go through the whole process of how you're gonna do that. Firstly, you need to choose your essay question. You've got four essay titles to choose from. Now you need to be choosing the one that you can write the best essay for. It doesn't matter if that's not the one that's tailored to your subject. So it might be you're applying for experimental psychology and you pick the more economicsy one. That's completely fine. You should be picking the one that you can write the best essay for. Okay, now you've got to do your plan. Now I'd suggest you give yourself five minutes to do a really thorough outline of the question. What argument are you going to make? What points are you going to make? How are you going to back them up? A really simple structure I used was just for and against, but other people use thematic structures, so like political, social, economic factors. Whatever you do, just keep your structure really simple and easy to follow. Now you've got your introduction, keep it short and simple. Just say the argument you're going to make, make it clear that you're not going to be sitting on the fence, and give a roadmap of what you're going to be doing in your essay. If necessary, define some key terms. For the main content, you're wanting it to be concise, balanced, and persuasive. Concise, your essay overall should not be going over two A4 sides. Don't use any more words than necessary. A common mistake that people make is including information that they've learned from their super curriculars, from research into their subject, that they really want to show off in the essay that isn't relevant. It's completely fine to show off information that you've learned, but only do so where it's relevant because it won't impress the teachers otherwise, it will only irritate them. The second thing it needs to be is balanced. You need to show that you can recognize and deal with all of the major potential objections to your argument. Show that you can defend yourself and that you can critically reflect on what you're saying. And thirdly, it should be persuasive. So every point you make should be backed up with some evidence. It doesn't have to be statistics or real world facts, but some example, maybe a hypothetical, maybe something from contemporary events, or maybe something from your own life. As long as it's persuasive and it's relevant, Finally, you're at the conclusion. Summarize the argument that you've made. Don't introduce any new ideas. If you want, you can connect it to a wider theme or suggest potential avenues for future discussion, but don't go any further. And that's it. That's everything you need to know to smash the thinking skills assessment. If you want more tailored advice and guidance, or maybe somebody to look through your essays, use UniReach. We give free on-demand mentoring sessions. 
You can book a session now with somebody who did amazing in their TSA and they can give you advice and support, look over your essays, whatever you need, completely for free in as fast as 48 hours. Check it out at www.enewreach.co.uk. Thanks so much for watching and best of luck with your exam.